السلام علیکم سعیدی سعیدی وٹ از دی ادب آف آسکنگ فار نظر آف اولیا اللہ اف وی فیل وی وانٹ مور اینڈ اٹس ناٹ کمنگ وٹ از دی ادب آف ریکویسٹنگ مور لو اینڈ گیز آف دا اولیا Yeah, to gaze, I think we talked all last week about the nazar. So that uh, we, we talked about that if you imitate their lives, what are they doing? What do they do to gain the nazar of Prophet ﷺ and the nazar of their shaykhs and all the, the big shaykhs of Naqshbandiyat al-Aliyah? So it's their activities, they try their best to be very active, as active as possible and to continuously motivate people and to have programs and activities and charities and, and all these different things that are, are you see the shaykhs doing is because they want the nazar of Prophet So we describe that uh, going to Prophet with 300 qurbans, 600 wells, these are immense blessings. So it means the shaykh is, is representing his community of people that that listen to him, believe in him, love him and he's going with these realities to the presence of Prophet ﷺ that say, Ya Rasulul Kareem out of your infinite oceans of, of mercy these also these actions that you, you granted us to do, you granted that ajr and that reward to come to us and to give these blessings to us, alhamdulillah wa shukran illah. So that same character that we see within the shaykh of continuously trying and striving to do good. That good deeds are how we gain the nazar, not by asking for the nazar, that doesn't… That, that's sometimes hollow, just keep your nazar upon me but that doesn't do anything. What does is an action behind that, that if you do good deeds, good actions, go out and feed, go out and support, go out and share the links, the activity and the khidmat in the way, to be of service in the way. It opens the door of nazar because that service has to be rewarded. Those deeds have to be rewarded. As a result those rewards then become now credited to who? Like blockchain. It's a link to someone and the activities they did is linked to someone. And then that blockchain has an entire link that this was his shaykh, this is his family, this is the individual. That whole link is locked onto your soul for eternity. And every deed that you do is on that link and that link in these issues is sending blessings to you continuously. But only through now the technology we're getting to understand that with the blockchain technology they write a contract and link to you to a certain tangible or non-tangible. Imagine what Allah has originally that the good deed you do is locked on a code to your soul and every time it's giving its dividend and its reward that's electronically coming to your soul means it's coming precisely to that individual, that blessing. And as a result of these deeds and these actions we gain the nazar of Prophet So that's why the, the, the shaykh is showing through actions, not just sitting somewhere and keep talking but to show through the actions that get the community to put their faith in action. Get up, go out and do something. As a result Prophet ﷺ ask, who's his shaykh? And begin to look, say, look he's motivating people to do good deeds. Yes they pray, yes they fast, they do all of these but those are required by Allah But what the shaykh wants is for the servant to be dressed now from Allah's love. In the holy hadith that they did their fard, they did what was obligatory for them. But now they're approaching me with love. As a result I want to dress them from my hearing, from my seeing, from my speaking. So it means the shaykh is, is, in, is motivating people to get Allah's nazar, Prophet ﷺ's nazar, nazar of awliyaullah. By these deeds and these actions Every difficulty is taken away because they're looking, these lights are being dressed upon the soul, many hardships are being taken away, most of which people don't know.
is the one and the hardship that you think you're asking about may be nothing compared to the hardship that you don't know that's behind the screen that has been lessened or taken down. So that immensity of Allah's mercies is un, unnoticed or ununderstood, is not understood how immense that is. We have things that we ask for but we really don't know what Allah has kept away from us, hardships and difficulties and calamities. So I think the expression is there, but for the grace of God there go I. Means that when you look at things you, you think that, you know, that, that calamity could have come to me and my family. But Allah's mercy kept something away. So all the things I'm worried about and I'm not getting my prayers or answered, there are many things Allah has taken away that I don't know and that He kept many sicknesses and calamities and hardships away inshaAllah. So there's so much to be thankful for. It's the good deeds that gain us their attention. So if we want their attention, do good deeds inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Dear Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah Could we also receive names of Prophets of Allah together with our names? What does it mean if we do and what are they representing? The names of Prophets meaning what? Means that the names of the Prophets are known. What their secret names are? That I don't know. But we know and of the names that we know, infinite names of Prophet but from the names that we know that when you study them you're entering into the Muhammadan reality. Nabi Rahma. then you meditate on, on the, your connection and say, Ya Rabbi dress me from the lights of Nabi Rahma, one of the names of Prophet and then the heart begins to expand that this is the mercy of Allah That's why Allah's, Allah has created these names. So, Mifta Rahmah. So these are all from Dalal Khirat. When you read in Dalal Khirat there's a section of 201 names of Prophet Then these are the names when we're reciting, reciting, reciting. Then you meditate on these names that you're reciting and Allah begin to dress the soul and open the soul with the fruits of that reality. Mifta Rahmah means that one of the names of Prophet is the key of Rahmah. But then that haqqaiq begins to open that if any key is going to open from Allah Allah is the lock and Prophet is the key, Mifta Rahmah, Mifta Rahmah which is the key of mercy, Nabi Rahmah. So means that if we want that mifta, that key of anything in life, Allah is then giving us a hint through that name that this is mifta rahmah, the key of rahmah. Of course that then you're going to need Prophet Prophet's name to any lock that Allah has, it only can be opened by that name of Prophet that entering into that reality to open. And that's through Sarawat and Fatiha. So when we ask through Salawat al-Fatiha, it's asking by that reality of Prophet to open what has been closed or locked and only through Prophet can that reality be opened. So when things are not opening or when we want things to open more then lots of Salawat al-Fatiha. That on the app and all over Google and continuously making So that those beautiful recitations are the openings and the beautific words in which Allah inspired creation to praise upon Prophet means by giving that due respect and then asking Prophet to open what Allah has locked and that only His opening through His truth and His reality can open whatever Allah has closed, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Sayyidi, what is the, the Naqshbandi order view on Mansur al Halaj? On what? What was that? 
on Mansoor Halaj? What's the Naqshbandi view? Oh, I can't speak for all Naqshbandi <laughs> <laughs> on anything. But Sayyidina Halaj was, was controversial because he knew that his people didn't understand his realities. So these, uh, these realities we teach them. But Naqshbandiya has a, a, an eloquence and, and ability to teach it so that it's not controversial and that nobody goes out trying to, to kill the shaykh. <laughs> so we've, we've described many times, An al-Haq that you find in all our talks, what does that mean? They say, oh he was imitating and saying he's Allah but uh, Allah is beyond Hay and Qayyum and Allah is beyond the understanding of Haq. Haq is, is related to creation. The Allah says, I created this creation with truth. Means the truth is and the Haq is Sayyidina Muhammad and the Nur Muhammad is the Haq of Allah the truth of Allah because it's a creation. Allah in the high stages of marifa is not inside of creation, is not understood by creation. It, there's no shaykh or shabi, there's nothing like unto Allah So at that level they understood that everything you relate to Prophet and stay away from trying to describe Allah So he wasn't saying he's Allah but he was talking about a Muhammadan dress in which he was in the dress of Prophet and he didn't want to explain it because he was testing to see if people really believe in him or want to harm him. That I'm teaching, teaching you, teaching and in the end I bet you if I say something you're going to attack me so you probably really didn't even like me and love me. And that was always their feeling just as an example for themselves because they wanted to prove that they didn't do it for people. They did it for Allah and if the people turn around and kill them well so be it. They didn't do it for the people, they, they taught for the sake of Allah They taught for the love and the sake of Sayyidina Muhammad But if it was to be famous amongst people then in the end somebody will sell you and that's what they were trying to show that in the end I'll say something, they won't even understand it. They misinterpret it but it give them an excuse to come and harm because in the end they probably really just didn't like him, they were jealous of him and they wanted to harm him anyways. So they were looking for an excuse and that just shows the bad character of people. And that's why then awliyaullah were continuously at that stage always testing people. Sayyidina Abu Yazid al-Bistami was continuously, he would go up on the minbar and knowingly say something controversial and everybody would attack. And many times they would attack him and throw him out of the town. In those times the towns were like walled areas. They would throw him out of the town and forcefully throw him out and then Allah would curse the town with a plague, with a sickness, with, with some sort of difficulty until they would come back and find him and bring him back into the town and ask for his forgiveness. But it was a continuous state of testing that, why when I teach these people they don't give 70 excuses and try to think of what the reality was. They're more quicker to try to hang the man versus saying, no we've learned a lot from him, maybe he's speaking something we don't understand, I have to pay, pray for patience. But when the bad character's there it shows that I really didn't even like this man, I'm just waiting for an excuse to hang this man. And that was just the, the rotten character of people. So this is the, this is the lives of only Allah and now it's a bit more sophisticated but same concept. They teach at a high level and who likes it, likes it, who runs away from it, they didn't need to be sitting there anyways because they were meant to run. They're not uh, too interested in collecting too many bananas. Because then too many people holding on, they're not really with it, they're not really understanding it. So every now and then Allah sends a test and shakes it and when they begin to shake everybody begins to fall off 
except the ones whom are there, they're firm, they're practicing, they're committed, they're doing everything necessary to tie their foot with the shaykh. Because when the storms come again it's not… they don't want to collect masses, there's nowhere to help the masses and save the masses. So what, whatever's coming of a storm there's not enough room. What they're interested in is those whom are committed, that they live it, breathe it, eat it and that's what they're interested in and that's what Allah wants is the sincerity. That's why a lot of people say, oh somebody came, somebody left, where did they go, well, don't worry about who came and who left and who's active and not active, just pray that you stay. There's difficulties coming and, and testing is always uh, very extreme. So when the person's firm, they believe, they practice, they lock themselves into it, they're extremely invested in it, then they're locked down. If they're not invested in it, then they keep thinking through their mind, I'll just pick up and go. But they understand, the shaykhs understand the system of shaitan. So when you're not invested in it and we describe many times, if they offer you free courses at college like they did for the kids, the kids never went. But as soon as they had to pay for a course or continuing education for your degrees and you're the first one there because you're invested in it and you know you're not going to give that away and do that again. So same with the tariqah, when I put my time, my effort, my abilities, everything, my blood, sweat and tears into that, when I'm going to pick up and go and do it all again, I'm not a crazy person and my nafs is not even crazy. That's how you tie your nafs down because your nafs is saying, are you kidding me we're going to start this from beginning and I'm going to go through all that humiliation again? Never, never, never. So the <laughs> nafs tells you, lock it down, we're not going anywhere until you can flip the nafs. So when you're so invested in it and Allah begin to bless it, then the nafs has flipped and now is enjoying it. So, oh, this is amazing, wow I didn't think all oh, these things could be opened. But until that point the nafs is a wild beast trying to make you run. Now how you can get on that nafs and ride it so it doesn't run away and to just make your life upside down every day, everywhere, somewhere different. So that's the system that the tariqahs have, it's to lock the person so their istiqam, they're rooted in their, in their actions and in their deeds and in their tariq. And that was the, the way of the shaykhs, Nafshbandi especially traveled the world and did all the things that we're supposed to do and all the khidmat that we're supposed to do, you can't replicate that. Then you can't start again from scratch with someone new. So you're invested in it and there's nowhere to go except the grave, inshaAllah. <clears throat> As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam uh, May Allah forgive my ignorance. It's, okay. <laughs> it seems unfair to the nafs that the brothers who betrayed Sayyidina Yusuf were later exalted as leaders of the nation. What could be the divine hikmah? Leaders of the nation? I don't think they achieved what Sayyidina Yusuf and Sayyidina Bani Amin achieved. So Allah, Allah Qafur Raheem is forgiving Allah by means of those brothers being the sacrifice Sayyidina Yusuf can be raised. Otherwise who, who's going to be the sacrifice and who's going to be the one raised? So there is a, always a hikmah that Allah is going to make them to do bad and going to raise this brother. So as a result it was written for them to attempt to do bad against the Prophet of Allah and Allah writes that he is forgiving and forgives them. But they in no way achieved the rank of Sayyidina Yusuf because it was not related to the material world we said. Material world he was in charge of the bank means he was in charge of the, the World Bank because at that time the World Bank was in Masr 
and the Egyptians. He was in charge of all their finances but that wasn't his station. His station was that, I've subjected, Allah subjected the moon, the sun and 11 planets under my feet they made sujood. And his father understood his station, it wasn't, oh great now you run the money can you give us a free loan, it, he kissed his feet. Understanding that what you've achieved is immense but the other brothers didn't achieve anything like that. So no, the, 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 the immense wisdom they didn't achieve anything like that. What Allah gave to the one whom suffered and the one whom, who struggled in Allah's way is never comparable to the one whom didn't. But Allah's mercy and forgiveness that He forgives His servant and they also leave content but it's no way the station of what Sayyidina Yusuf achieved of realities and this not the material plane. Means many times we may see people equal on the material world but it's, it's in no way comparison to what Allah has given to their souls of an authority in the heavens. And this world is temporary. So you write on a little scale and you see like a little 70 years or 80 years is a little tiny dot and then you make a line called eternity that has no beginning and no end. On this plane of eternity Allah gave this immense authority to Sayyidina Yusuf So that's not comparable to whatever sort of kingdom was given on the material world. So that this is always a, the reality for those who struggle in the way of Allah don't look at your material world with people and say, oh all the material worlds are comparable and what's the thing. But what Allah give to you from the spiritual realm that lasts all of eternity because once you achieve in your spirituality you achieve in eternity. It's written from beginning of time to the end of time that reality to be dressed upon that servant. So when we struggle we're struggling for eternity not for the physical world. Now in the physical world people may be given things but it's in no way a comparison to the dress and the reality that Allah inshaAllah dress upon the souls and the station of the souls and what they can achieve. Now if that was from Bani Israel, that's why then all these hadiths Prophet was giving immense hints that my ulama they are inheritors, warithul anbiya, they are the inheritors of the Prophets of Bani Israel. So one of them the top Prophets of Bani Israel is what we just described Sayyidina Yusuf which is this is the 12th month this is still the Tajalli. So out of his top, 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 top Prophets of Allah Prophets on Allah have described, my ulama inherit that. So Prophet's ulama and these ulama means that they have the reality inward and outward. They are the inheritors which are mean they are awliya. So that my ulama are inheritors of this reality and that's what we describe then Prophet's awliya Allah, the ones whom are warith al-Muhammadiyya under Prophet guidance, these are the awliya of Allah they inherit these stations. So their sainthood is not for this physical world limited. If somebody is a saint in this world that has no understanding what that sainthood is for eternity and what governance Allah gave to them of universes, realities and known and unknown creations for all of eternity. They achieve that and they serve that reality, inshaAllah. <coughs> mm. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. Sayyidi, how do we increase our intuition and foresight? Intuition by your meditation. The foresight is coming through the heart and intuition means that your heart is finely tuned because you're intuitive. When the heart is tuned it's picking up frequencies and vibrations and by meditation and connecting with the shaykhs they're sending abundance of energy. So not only the energy that you, you have 
but they send uh, an abundance of positive energy. As a result of this abundance, ener abundance of energy the heart is becoming very fine-tuned and as a result it's picking up vibrations and inspirations. And that's why then when they're fine-tuning, fine-tuning then they're continuously picking up all of these sort of vibrations that are coming out, what should be spoken, what is understood and that's the, the life of that reality, it's a life of subtlety. That when the heart is sensitive and the energies are strong within the heart, it picks up the vibration, it picks up the, the energy, the speech of Allah that emanating throughout creation. Means that the amr, Allah's command is a continuous command coming down but it can't be heard by the ears. Kulun amr. Salaamun hiya hatta matta al fajr. On the malaika wa ruh bi idnillah, with the permission of Allah, a command is coming from, from our understanding right now, just the sun. There's a ruh, a Muhammadan representative, which Sayyidina Yusuf was at that reality, and the malaika that are under his service. As a result, the order comes with the permission of Allah and begins to move, salamun, hiya. It's moving with a power and that's why we try to describe with something we know but people don't have a reference like a Wi-Fi. So this is wireless Wi-Fi emanating from the power central of this galaxy is the sun. That Wi-Fi has a sound but can't be heard through the ear. So now they have devices that try to pick up vibrations and they can now faintly hear sounds. They have devices that they can put near a, a plant and they can hear sounds because of the vibrations, the energies and the emanations. So the heart is the most powerful, more powerful than Sony, Mitsubishi and all these devices that people create. Because Allah created this and blew His Spirit into it and created from His two hands, His power oceans. So when that becomes finely tuned, it's picking up the vibrations. Through meditation and meditation through the shaykhs, that receiver is being fine-tuned. So you buy this $5,000 radio that picks up short wave, long wave, it picks up truck drivers on CB things. You pick up too much noise, there's just too many things to choose from and that's the heart under regular meditation. The muraqaba means that the souls of the shaykhs are coming in now and they take off all the other channels. They say, this channel's not needed, this channel's not needed, this channel's not needed and they begin to rig the heart according to what Allah and Prophet want for that servant. So all other unnecessary channels are taken off. That's why we said, don't go to people to reprogram and touch you because they don't know this system, how you've been encrypted, how you've been dressed now through your muraqaba and through your practices. All other channels have been taken off so that their heart is fine-tuned to Naqshbandiyatul Aliyah. And as a result, they're like at 92. You know you go dial to 92, 92, immediately you begin to pick up a Naqshbandi broadcast coming down. Because the Naqshbandi signal is 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. There's no sleep in the world of light, there's a continuous sobats, continuous nisa and guidance coming down, continuous isharats, continuous everything, it never shuts down. So we need a system in which to fine tune ourselves to that channel. That's why we say, don't go here and don't go there, don't sit with this and don't sit with that because then you'll have 93, 97, 99, you'll have all these other mixed up channels but you won't be on just one. You'll be just all over the place and scattered because only through the muraqaba, only through their loyalty and commitment 
The shaykhs are fine-tuning that heart and that's what we call attunement. That you have to have been tuned by somebody, right? That's why they say, who, who, who's, you're an apprentice to who? Who did you study under? Who, who tuned your heart? Who, who did you make your connection with? So, well, I don't know. But then you're not tuned and you're picking up all sorts of stations. And you've met people like that, they talk from left to right, you don't know what they're talking about, inconsistent every day is something different. But when this is on a specific channel and they've been built for that channel, then anytime you come that channel is still on that discourse, always about Prophet always about that reality, always going deeper into that reality. That's how attuning. And fine tuning, once they're tuned onto the heart of their shaykh, of the shaykh through their muraqabah and these lights have taken off all unnecessary channels, then they pick up Naqshbandiyatul Aliyya. And as a result that can go infinitely high with the immensity of the shajara and the chain. When you look at these shaykhs and these sahabis and these Ahlul Bayt that are all linked onto this radio frequency and the last days all tariqahs, frequencies will cut off and only one broadcasting frequency will be vibrating from the heart of Sayyidina Mahdi and that's Naqshbandiyatul Aliyya because he's on that station and he's supporting that channel. And that's why you don't hear anybody talking about anything because their signals are all dropping. But the Naqshbandiyatul Aliyya through the heart of Sayyidina Mahdi is sending that broadcast out and it becomes stronger and stronger. So when the nation begin to enter into immense open conflict and difficulty, you know there's Radio Free America when disasters happen, they have these radios, welcome to Radio Free America, whoever's listening right now, we're broadcasting from so and so, yeah those are movies. But the reality is that when this enters and this world enters into its ocean of immense difficulty then that broadcast will be very significant that's coming into the hearts of people. Means that they've tuned themselves, they meditated in a time of you know making a connection. Can you imagine trying to learn this in the middle of running and trying to find food and shelter and, and uh, some warmth and you can't do that at that time, you're just running and turning grey from fear. But this system that if it's established this becomes your radio to their existence and to their broadcast. And those whom they've tuned themselves then the frequencies are coming day and night what to be done and what to be recited. and, and and all the information that will be moving through that channel inshaAllah. So it's a time in which to build it now for a day that you may need it. And if you die before then alhamdulillah you achieve something for all of eternity. And if it came into need and you have it then alhamdulillah your Allah has granted you a great success inshaAllah. As salaamu alaykum shaykh Walaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah Does taking care of the mental health include going to psychologists and therapy too? And what if one is nervous about going? Yeah that whatever Allah puts us in a condition there has to be a, a remedy. So everything has a, has a handicap and that means that Allah wants servants to struggle. So this is a part of struggling, medical conditions, mental condition, physical condition, financial conditions, everybody has a condition. Allah puts them in a condition and then presents a door, Ya Wahab, Ya Wahab, Ya Wahab, Ya Musabibun Asbab, Ya Mufatiha Abwab. So the one whom causes my condition and the one whom provides a door then only Allah can grant that relief. So then we are in the condition that Allah wants us to be. We do the zikrs, the meditations, spiritual practices, go to the doctors that you have to, take the medicine that you have to so that your condition can be solid and then you meditate, then you contemplate and there's nothing to fear 
Allah has put the servant in that position. So it's all under Allah's hands. So what you can't do what you know what Allah has, has written for us to have this sickness or weakness then it's written. And we have to just be humble enough to seek out its remedy and its therapy and then build our energy and build our spiritual practices so that we can sort of survive whatever testing Allah is putting us through. So alhamdulillah Allah's way is filled with rahmah and mercy and Allah never tests a servant beyond their ability to cope. It's just we don't understand how much we can cope. That Allah gives us patience, sabr and strength of faith inshaAllah so that we can achieve what Allah wants us to achieve. And alhamdulillah that one other last on this understanding when, when oppression fills the earth and people force you to do something, they say that they may force people to have a chip and other faiths were putting out headlines, oh my god if you put this chip you'll be dead, you'll be dead, you'll be entering hell forever. But this is not Islamically correct that if you put something incorrect in yourself thinking that will help you, you may be doomed to a difficult test. But if somebody oppresses you and says that you are required to do it, then Allah that this is Allah's program, this is Allah's creation, He wrote it so He's the one in charge to make it so that we're not in difficulty. Anytime something is forced upon a people Allah carries that. But when you run towards something thinking that's your najat, that's your salvation, that's the way, that's when you're in difficulty, right? So they offered something and they say, okay you're going to feel better now. Well when you run towards that and you all of a sudden got very sick and all sorts of difficulties, that's then, that's between you and what you ran towards. But if they say, there's no way past this line unless you do this and we're going to throw you in jail, we're not going to give you food, we're not going to do this, then you do it because that's the way Allah wrote it. You can't come against Allah's will, it's whatever Allah wrote, you're at that position, you're not choosing it, it's being forced upon you, then Allah is the one whom carries that responsibility. So there's a difference, it's a difference between choosing your door and then being shoved into that door. When the person is oppressed and pushed into a situation then alhamdulillah it's all we rely tawakkul on Allah and then Allah before Rahim. This is for issues of, of other questions that were coming up about being forced to be chipped and this and this and the Christian philosophy was very aggressive and all about you go to hell but in Islam there's no compulsion. If anybody is oppressed and forced to do something then Allah ghafoor raheem, then Allah is merciful and forgiving. Then inshaAllah Allah's rahmah and mercy always to be upon us for the sake of our love for Allah's mercy, the love of Sayyidina Muhammad Anyone has any, any uh, emails help me at nurmuhammad.com and uh, alhamdulillah I think they have also now for the, the charity site help me at uh, muslimcharity.com for any questions related to the charity, charity activities inshaAllah. As Salaamu Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam These molids that are conducted Sayyidi are so miraculous that when one practices every question that pops to the mind it is answered by Shaykh Nurjan. Oh, mashallah. This is the barakah of these awliya, barakah al naqshbandiyyatul aliyya and barakat always of uh, Allah and the love of Sayyidina Muhammad the one calling you, the one speaking is all the same. It's a matter of sitting with our hearts open inshaAllah to, to hear and always the, the first one to hear is for myself is that when we put ourselves in the audience and then speak to ourselves for what we are in need of and a constant reminder for what we are in need of, alhamdulillah the miracle begins and uh, this is the miraculous nature of tariqah inshaAllah that that radio station comes and, and begins to, to give 
what these souls are all in need of and their desire is been sent by Allah Allah sends the, the desire and the meal appears and people find that to be miraculous, oh that's what I was craving, yeah. The one who sent that craving is the one who also sent the meal. So this is a, the miraculous nature of tariqah and the spiritual reality that this is a spiritual door in which to, to achieve these, these realities. The questions are very good, they're very progressive. Looks like people are reading the, the meditation, understanding the meditation and the talks that we give from the last few weeks and anytime we give a talk it's good to go back and ponder that talk and begin to ask about it so that we have a feeling that it was understood, that people were understanding the talk, the depth of it because these are in our belief uh, jewels that just come out like a drop but the in immensity like an iceberg. You see just the tip but under it is an immense ocean of realities, manifestation, the, the, the talks on the atom, the energies, the, the healing through energies, the vibrations, all of these realities are immense. So the shaykh is looking for talking about something and then hearing people's feedback. He didn't talk because he needed to understand it and, and to know the subject but he wants to know that is, is the the audience absorbing it, understanding it, meditating on it and trying to go deeper into that reality so that they stay within that flavor for three days, four days, five days to sort of take the benefit of the immensity of the oceans of knowledges that are coming out for the benefit of the soul inshaAllah. And those who are commenting online, we're watching and going through all the YouTube comments as, as much as we can. and. It's great that people are making the comments and, and uh, don't stay hidden in the shadows but to come out and to, to make a comment. You know there's 4,000 views on a video and alhamdulillah we're up to 200-300 comments but it, it should be closer to the 4,000 views unless thousand of the people viewed it and just couldn't stand it. But the other 3,000 inshaAllah they should at least sort of weigh in, say, salams, how are you? Okay, mashaAllah, thumbs, I mean just whatever we can to get the nazar, the nazar of Allah nazar of Prophet and the nazar of awliyaullah that these are all Muhammadan haqqaiqs and anyone who loves Allah and loves Sayyidina Muhammad then they weigh in to show that love that, that we're hearing this. It's not like something being sold on every corner, there's uh, I don't know how many channels that teach about this reality. If you can count them on your fingers, one, two or three and so it's precious and when the audience deems it precious they make a comment, Allah is the one who sends the reward because you're taking a share in a good deed and, and Allah is addressing you from that share. So it's best that for those whom are just sitting and being hidden to be active, proactive that I, I saw this, this barakah come and I took an action to participate in it. Otherwise one day it just goes offline and off air and you say, well what happened to it? And so well, you didn't really participate into it so oh, it, Allah took it away eventually. So it's always up to us to all participate in things, anything that we've, we find that we have a, a love and a desire for to comment on it, to share it, to participate within it. So alhamdulillah that this is our, our, our way, inshaAllah. Those 3,000 other people wake up and, and start making comments, inshaAllah. Mm, as salaamu alaykum, Sayyidi. Wa alaykum as salaam wa Can one still have the nazar if they lose their Islam but strengthen their faith? How do you lose your Islam? And you can't strengthen your faith if you lost your Islam, that didn't sound right. I think we've talked before that, I think the talk that came out on this weekend, on last Saturday was a very beautiful talk. The guys put it together with the nice uh, images and, and gave the, a deeper understanding because the talks sometimes are a bit deep for people to understand. The images come and sort of reinforce what we were sort of inspired and thinking of so that they can also be inspired by it. That when Allah loves you 
He guides you. And when He guides you, He guides you with that love towards the tariqahs, it's the highest level of guidance. So it's the highest expression of Divine love. When Allah turns from a servant, they turn from their tariqah. So the, the two are, are driving each other if we understand. The one who drove me here is my Lord. I didn't come by cleverness that Allah's directing me in that direction and Allah's love keeps me in that direction. Allah's love encourages me to go deeper into that direction. When I begin to lose that love and lose that attraction is as if Allah is turning from me, no longer inspire me to go there, no longer inspire me to do these good actions. And before you know it someone else is now occupying where I'm driving to and where I'm going. So that's not a increase in faith, that, that's something completely different. So this is a reality, so the highest level of reality is the Muhammadan haqqaiq and acceptance of Qur'an, acceptance of Sayyidina Muhammad and the love of all the Prophets and all holy books means you've gone up on the ladder. So once you go up on the ladder it's a gift from Allah it's no longer acceptable to go down the ladder. So you can't shelf the Qur'an and say, oh I'm no longer accepting this and I'm no longer accepting Prophet but now I'm blessed. Means that's not, that's not an, a correct understanding. We can only go up in life, you cannot go down. Once you go down you've been cutting something. So it's always best to always go up in life and to, to always be in Islam, always to be with the Holy Qur'an and always be under the love and intercession of Sayyidina Muhammad And a Muslim wherever they are and whoever they are is one who submits their will to the will of God. So many are Muslims and they don't know it. So the English for us to understand is that, I submit my will to the will of God. And I think they have a prayer called the Lord's Prayer, Thy Kingdom come, Thy Kingdom come and Thy will will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So it means that's the same du'a and that's a description of a Muslim who brings the will of God and the Kingdom of God into their heart. And so Islam means submission. To submit, I submit my will to the will of God. And to be a Muslim is that I'm somebody whom is continuously in a state of submitting my will to God's will and that His kingdom override my heart. So we can't leave that, I can't leave God's kingdom because then it becomes whose kingdom is now coming into my heart. There's only two, it's either God or shaitan because he, he runs this earth. So either we're running away from shaitan and going to God or we're running away from God going to shaitan. So there's only these two doors. You can't say, I'm staying in the middle, there's no middle because the, the gravitational pull is pulling you either this way or that way and that's the problem. So our life is always to run to God, run towards the Divine, run towards knowledge run towards seeking knowledge and love of all the Prophets and all holy books inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Taala <laughs> Sayyidi, how to tackle climate change? Climate change? Yeah. Oh, we talked about that, we have uh, on, on their religion organic, it was very popular, people got very angry with us. <laughs> Climate change and, and, and the organic religion, so that, that was a good one. So yeah, the, I, I don't think there's anything that we can do, Prophet forbid the contamination and pollution and harming the earth. So there's nothing that we can do that actually harms the earth. Because when the earth gets tired of us it basically shakes 
opens and swallows us. And then when it's very tired of us it makes the volcanoes like a, like a pimple, it makes the mountain to open a fire and burn us. So this is a pretty mighty earth with lots of tricks and lots of power. When it gets tired of humans as it is now then you find all of these difficulties and, and catastrophes happening. So this is not something because we used hairspray. This is people's bad actions. When they're bad their character is fiery. As a result of being fiery they're creating a heat onto the earth. The earth doesn't want humans walking on it, swimming on it or traversing its airs. Because of their fiery bad character it's fed up so it begins to shake. So you see earthquakes beginning all over the world and they, they grow in severity. Then beginning to volcanoes where well, the day will come where volcanoes and fire will be everywhere. Why? Because you think you had hairspray too much or you uh, exhaust from your car? It's not the truth. That whole movement of climate was actually directed towards companies and large corporations. When people found out how much these companies were throwing contamination and pollution into waters, rivers, lakes, they came out and said that, well we can't have people say it's companies doing this. So they made their own organizations, their own names, the whole green philosophy and they said it's actually the humans doing this problem. <laughs> they shifted the responsibility from corporations and industrial pollution to humans causing this problem. Well that was convenient for shaitan because you know shaitan wants to kill six out of seven humans. So the imam that's coming, the dajjal that's coming he doesn't want too many people on this earth. He's under the same aqeedah of shaitan. So that's convenient to say that it's no longer corporations that are making this earth unhealthy, it's actually you humans that are making the earth a problem. Yeah. So the shaitan wants to kill six out of seven humans and they make a whole organization and a study and a report that says, yeah we have too many people and we don't have enough resources and then it's just too many people. I think if we got rid of most of them then the earth would be a better place. So this whole philosophy of climate change is something moving towards the way of dajjal and the eradication of humans from this earth. Organic is again same understanding that their organic movement is, is filled with different types of difficulties that they use grey waters, they use all sorts of uh, pretty disgusting processes in putting and, and growing things. They take and they want to recycle because shaitan knows what's bad. Humans don't understand but Prophet taught that you cannot defecate and urinate under a tree because the tree will absorb those contaminants and toxins from the body and put it into the fruit. Therefore contaminating and poisoning the population of people who eat from those vegetation, vegetables and fruits. So how, what a shaitan came up with in his new organic religion is that no, you know we have to be conscious people of our footprint and as a result take the toilets of these cities, separate and take their water and throw their water into the trees and irrigations and farming. So they're actually doing exactly what against what Prophet was teaching. So they have a system of using grey water, throwing contaminants and then they found in these contaminants everybody in society is on, on drugs that they have mental illnesses, they have all sorts of medications. All of these medications they're in that water going into that soil, going into those fruits. So when people are paying three times, four times the price of organic they get to the benefit of all those nice <laughs> toxins and, and medications in those nice beautiful apples that you buy. So they have a system in which to eradicate and to destroy and, and uh, they're not interested in people nor are they interested in the health of people. 
But real organic is if you grow it, you washed it, you cleaned it, you understand what you're doing, go to the countryside, have your own fruits, have your own sheep, have your own goat. But if you think a big corporation is caring for you, then we, we wake up and we realize nobody cares for us except Allah and His Rasul inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. Uh, Sayyidi, Prophet Muhammad said, His companions are stars, and these days there are so much news about stars dying. Is there any correlation to this reality? No, this again, the, I, would, I would imagine these are funny sciences. Their science doesn't make sense, right? So there are some scientific realities that you try to correlate to truths so their scientists can understand. And there are others that are merely a hypothesis that is so out there that it doesn't make sense. So that them witnessing something dying, exploding, this is something they don't even understand. So the ferments and what they see is not what they understand. Where that light coming from is not what they understand. So they're not revealing everything that they understand either. So they, they talk about formations, they say that this is a, a distant star, distant planet and when they look with advanced micro… not a microscope but what is it called, telescopes, they find something else, they find something more gaseous and moving. They don't understand how at a distance it looked like it was a solid fixture and when they go closer something is, is moving. So much of what they talk about we, we'd have to sort of take it with a grain of salt. Much of what they disclose again with a grain of salt until we can sort of get closer to what Prophet was teaching for us that to take the reality of a najj and a star. That which you achieve from the world of light is eternal. And those whom achieve eternity is eternity. These, these are deep realities. So that which people are achieving of realities means that everybody has a light and their light is like a flickering light but their life is to make themselves to reach eternal lights. So the light that comes and flickers in the sky, it's a soul that didn't reach its eternity. Where it went Allah knows best but yeah. So many things within the heavens that we see are not yet fully understood. So it's difficult at times to make reference to their sciences when it doesn't correlate with the haqqaiqs and, and the reality of the haqqaiq. So we said before for an example, I don't know if it sounds confusing so far but it's difficult to, to quantify what sometimes is not real truth with them. It's a hypothesis they put out. One such reality is the moon. Why is it that you see the moon grey when the moon is not grey? Why is that image controlled? That the image loaded onto Google and the images that are propagated is of something grey but Allah created nothing grey. Everything has colour, everything has an existence. But it conveniently grey because then you can't see any formation, depth and no depth perception if everything is grey. So that people have to ask themselves, what kind of control do they have that only the images that are allowed are actually viewed? And where can you go to find images that are not on those profiles and on those platforms for the true image? And the image for another one is of the earth. The true image of the earth is not what you see, right? The shape of our planet, the shape of the continents, 
the sizes of the continent is not what it is, it's not the reality. We've described that before, that Europe is on, on their map, even Google map it's all controlled, that Europe on their maps is very huge and then they make Africa small because these maps were invented by a certain race of people that didn't care for any other ethnic race. Even their locations are upside down. So and every map you buy will have that same understanding. How is that? Any satellite image you see will be the same map because it's not really a satellite image. It's just sort of a animated image sort of propagating the same understanding. So the continents are much different sizes. They don't want those huge continents to be known. And those continents are on top and the other ones are below. Mecca is above the equator, not below. But because it's round they flip the globe this way to show you, it's actually the other way. So all these things are… it's like the fake moon landing and Mars. When you go up it's, it's all controversial. What they see, what they say they're seeing, the speed of light, the distance of that light, and why is it that you can see that light but it, it, they, their science of, of light and the speed of light doesn't make any sense. So we'll stick with the reaching of the haqqaiqs and how to open the star within the heart and the reality within the heart to reach eternity inshaAllah. <clears throat> As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa is it ever bad to feel too much for people? Like when someone is in trauma, why do we pick up their feelings to a detriment to ourselves and our family? Anytime you fine tune the heart and a sensitivity to the heart, you have to be careful in where you direct that heart. So people in difficulty and you open yourself to their difficulty, to their world, to their suffering then… and you don't know how to control your energy and your heart and your emotion, it can be very heavy. So cer certain people anything that they focus on, on, on a person or an event and they really… they, they overly focus they carry that and they feel the emotion, they feel the difficulty of it. So that's, that's a difficult situation. That's why spiritual training comes to teach us that don't be like that. That you know you connect with Prophet you connect with light, you connect with energy and keep a distance when dealing with people and gathering information and, and you have to understand the energy world. That's why you don't need to call all your relatives to find all their problems, to listen to all their difficulties because those are all energies. So imagine that say, I want to go collect you know 500 pounds of immense negative energy today, you're going to be overloaded, your system will be overloaded. So there is, it's a not a necessary thing, you should be learning how to talk positive with people and say, oh inshaAllah everything will be better. Don't be a source of people just downloading all their horrific things and then all you want to do is talk about how everything is great. Because then you'll not only take their burden but you'll also send them all hasad because they'll be very jealous of you. So this whole system has to be understood that I don't need to hear about everybody's problems, don't want to get into everybody's depth of their problems and that's for common people. So imagine then the shaykh's trainings not to do that. They don't need to hear all the events and, and the details of every event for what do they need to do that. They just need to hear that you're in difficulty, you're humble enough to come to them and that's it. They make a du'a, it's up to Allah to resolve the issue and how Allah wants to resolve the issue. Allah was only looking for a sign of humility. So but people generally want to throw all their information. But that information is an energy and a charge. So anyone who deals with energy they should know not to take that. Depression, mental anxiety, uh, oh, all concerns, sadness, grief, these are all very heavy, heavy energies. 
So as energy training and energy understanding we should be very cautious and, and govern our, our lives accordingly inshaAllah. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yaseekum wa salaamun al mursaleen wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri surat al-Fatih.